Hello everyone, Perry back here in Park City with another exclusive Collider interview. Big thanks to Kia for having us here, making these interviews happen. We're talking about a really cool movie right now. It's, uh, whose house? His, His house. house. Yeah. Our house. It's the footballer in me. So there's a lot of folks watching right now that probably do not know what his house is just yet. So I'm going to put the duty on you. You're probably doing this a lot right now. A brief synopsis of the movie. Sure. Uh, his house is about two refugees who are given asylum in the UK and are given a house. But moving in, they soon discover something sinister lurking within it. Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> First feature here for you yes. as a director. And you have a really unique background as far as the I content do. you've made. So whether it be uh, commercials, uh, music videos, experimental shorts, anything like that. Yes. What do you think it is about that experience that really came in handy making your first feature? Being able to experiment all the time, trying out different things, um, exploring with the actors, but also the art department and the cinematography, always trying to find different ways to tell a story. I think all those things came in handy. And what was the kind of nugget of an idea that had the story uh, going in your mind? Where did it all begin? Um, I think it began growing up in London and coming from an ethnic, ethnically diverse background and the experiences of being a black person in a country where you're never always feeling like you're wanted and how that feels for a person, an um, immigrant, moving to the country and trying to find their way, their future in this place. And how did uh, the cast come together here? Are we talking about a traditional audition process? Did any of you know each other before? What was really cool actually about the audition process is that um, I think I did a tape and sent it in and it got a recall. And then the first person I did a chemistry test with was actually Wumi. And I'm sure like we both met uh, with different partnerships, but um, clearly the first one was the best one. Actually, you were my only one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> actually, okay. You oh, no, that's only because you were busy, though. Like, you had, you left. I literally, you got a flight straight after our chemistry yeah, test. Yeah. So. And no, after when we came in, we were like, we need to see these two guys together because like, you guys were so awesome. And then you, you guys um, auditioned together, and it was like, it became very easy. Well, thank after you very that. much. You guys are really phenomenal together. I am curious though, especially with a movie that's a two-hander like this, when you find out who's locked in opposite you and you don't know them, do you, I don't know, go online and Google them and start looking up their work and everything? Well, I guess the, the acting community is quite small in the UK, so I knew of Chopin and we had been in we had been in many rooms together, but we weren't mates. We hadn't like hung out on our own. Yeah. Um, so I knew that he was a good guy. Like I knew that he was, He. we have so many mutual friends, so you, you know that he's cool if he's hanging out with your cool friend, you know. <laughs> so um, I wasn't worried about that, actually. I was just, and I'd seen his work as well. So that was like, okay, we're cool. We're good. Well, I was going to say that, like, all of those things are very true. But, like, when I found out that I might be working with Wumi, I was so proud. Because Wumi's reputation precedes her, for sure. It does. And, like, she is one of the most respected actresses in the UK, you if are. not the world, very is soon, I'm yeah. sure. So for me, it, it was okay. like, I get to work with Wumi. And all of my friends were like, you get to work with Wumi? Oh, my God. So, like, um, so seriously, this is true. I'm not just guessing you. Uh, so, yeah, like, get into chem read with her. I just, I, it made me feel like I had arrived somewhere that I get to be working with uh, someone of her caliber, you know. I, I would really, I'm going to echo everything he just said, because between this and I was just telling you before I saw Sweetness in the Belly and we covered it at TIFF, so good. Oh, thank so good. you. Thank you so much. You guys are so sweet. I feel like I want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm curious about your onset collaboration, especially with a primary location like that. Is there opportunity to play around on set or do you have everything meticulously planned out given, you know, the nature of the story, the visuals that you've constructed and some of the, the really interesting camera tricks that are pretty chilling? Um, I, I think part of being able to explore is by being very meticulous up front. So planning everything to a point where you feel con confident in what you're doing. So on the day, you have the ability to try different things because you always have the core, the structure around you to do, get done where you need to get done. 
You have to tell me about working with Javier Botet too, because he is one of my favorite people in the so industry. The he is, he's really one of a kind. So what was it like working with him and uh, developing the stuff he got to do in this? Um, he's playful and creative and loves to get down and dirty. And <laughs> he's very professional though. Yeah. Like very he really, yeah. he was, I mean, he his call time was in like incredibly long mm -hmm. and like he just he didn't moan he didn't complain I mean, he must have been hot he must have been he must have needed a pee i mean <laughs> sorry i mean i mean <laughs> no you can say that but i mean it's true. I, just, I mean he was just there was not one complaint or anything he was just so professional what i thought was particularly amazing about him was um i could feel his experience mm. you know he has done this time and time again and at such a high quality as well that he would almost he, he just knew where to be and how to hold himself and where the camera was and like how to i think he helped really facilitated mm -hmm. the scene the shooting that scene because of his experience yeah. and i'd love to be able to be able to do something like that not necessarily because he is just a phenomenon but um to be able to have such great experience that i can be what do you call it that i can help the process of shooting because I know if, if we're ever stuck or something like I'm waffling now I don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> but basically like he was so experienced that he made shooting with him so much easier and I learned lo loads from him he, he quite really a technical a scene exactly. a very very technical very scene oh like, yeah yeah there's a, there's a lot of things here that I would imagine are, are really technical and incredibly creative things that I didn't expect and things that I don't often see in genre movies which was very refreshing I think Avi is a boss, and but I also think we were surrounded by really, really phenomenal um, technicians and artists and creatives who really helped make this job a lot easier than it, it, it looked. There were, um, we had a little family on set, and they and we had such a good time together, and we worked so hard. Very proud of. This the is team. A, some very, very heavy material. So is there an opportunity for that family on set to have, you know, any levity in between takes? Oh, absolutely. We, I mean, it was a joy to be on set. Like, it really was joyful. It was, yeah. Uh, you know, this, the subject matter, you know, when you're, you click into work mode, like for rehearsals, for the shooting, yes, that's, that has a lot of weight. But you know, when we shout cut, we're like talking about '90s cartoons together, and well, now you have to tell me which ones. What we Banana Man. What else have we Banana about? Man? Yeah. Do you Why have that? I never heard of that? An Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I was a Nickelodeon kid growing yeah. up. Rugrats. Red and well, Rugrats. Right. Now, now you're now you're speaking my language hey right now. Hey Arnold. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Hey Arnold. Doug. Doug, Love Ren Doug. and Stimpy. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on in this department. I love Ren and Stimpy. It, it, made me feel <laughs> it made me feel on edge. That's why I loved it, though. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that my, my dentist phobia comes from a very specific episode. So right. Stimpy. Yeah. Yeah. That's the episode I I'm do. talking about, too. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the lines that really struck me in the movie, and I'm so I'm so mad we have to wrap up soon, was it's something to the effect of you know what men can do. Uh, you think it's bumps in the night that uh, that frighten me. I'm just curious what it's like nailing a line that makes such a big impression like that, and also just in general with horror movies, what do you guys like to watch, and what does scare you in movies? Well, this scared me. Ter I mean, a lot. Um, I'm not. I don't really watch horrors or thrillers or even Jurassic Park like <laughs> <laughs> I do I do have to sh even the mummy I mean I I I, I jump at a lot of things I, I jump just walking down the street um so watching this oh. was <laughs> watching this was hard <laughs> it was hard and um, but I really I, I, I what I loved most about the script was that it wasn't there was such heart to it that the, the 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 trauma isn't just the horror; it's what they've been through. Mm -hmm. And Rial's line of you know what what I've seen, nothing can nothing can scare her anymore because she's seen what humanity is capable of. And yeah, it's just such a simple line, but it just is so it's just so deep and truthful and terrifying. And um, I love that. I think. I think that might have been my favorite line in the, I think. 
I think it might have been. I'll actually. tell you it's my favorite. Yeah, line. I don't, I feel I'm not like going to forget is. that anytime soon. Yeah, right. Yeah. So wait, now are you into horror? <laughs> are you going to watch the movie? Are you going to? No, yeah, I've seen it. I've okay, seen it, okay. and it's it's great. Um, my issue is that I watched What Lies Beneath when I was <laughs> 11, and it terrified me. And I think it's like a 12 rated movie. Can't be. No, or 15, it scared maybe. Me too, Can't so be. It's probably an 18. No, no, no. It's definitely not an 18. What? It's, okay. it's just it's it's an underrated film. It might be PG-13 in the no, States. No, yeah. I yeah, can't yeah. watch yeah. PG-13. But I was just too young to watch it I when s- I saw I it. Because I saw it when I was too young also. I mm-hmm. watched it as well. It's, it, it's great. But the it's only really problem is film. that because I was like traumatized by that as a child, literally to the point where I couldn't use the bathroom or go into <laughs> the toilet without my parents switching still. on the light first. <laughs> still to this day. Um, <laughs> I am still looking for that film that will scare me. Like there are lots of films that are, jump scares are shocking. But in terms of like terrifying me to the point where I have to like switch on the light or I don't want to go outside because it's too dark, you know, maybe I'm too old and I'm past that psychological place. But I'm, I'm sure there is a film out there that will just terrify me. I'm getting the wrap up sign, but I can give you a long, long list. Of OK, films great. You could check out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Do you want to add anything before we come to a close? Um, I hope you enjoy the film. Yes. People who haven't seen it. Yeah. His house, guys. Keep an eye out for it. Thank you again for Thank being you. here. Congratulations. Thank you, Big thanks to Kia for making these interviews happen at the Supper Suite in Park City. Like and share this one before you leave it, and we'll see you soon with more content from the festival.